is going on guys my name is Hussein and in this video I want to explore the new Deno framework and uh, what I want to build in this video guys is I want to build an HTTP server with Deno and and then I'm going to build an HTTP S server so we're going to generate like a self-signed uh, certificate and then spin up uh, a Deno server and serve the TLS uh, certificates or are these self-signed and uh, yeah how about we jump into it guys so Deno as of today uh, today's what June June 28th 2020 does not support HTTP 2 so we'll be dealing with just pure HTTP 1.1 that's not a big deal but I, I still don't think it's production ready to be honest right but doesn't stop us from tinkering with it how about we actually jump into it so the first thing actually we need to install deno and the easiest way to install deno and is to go to deno.land the site let's open the site deno.land and then uh, follow the instructions i'm going to use homebrew to install the notes which is the easiest thing and when and uh in um in mac and uh i recommend using chocolatey if you're windows or just download it and do the curl thingy right just does the job right so once you have it let's go ahead and install it real quick so i'm going to the terminal i'm going to go brew and install deno and then updating homebrew all that jazz that's it we have deno installed so how about we actually jump into it and start testing so I'm going to open a brand new folder. Let's go to JavaScript, Playground. I'm going to call it uh, Deno, HTTP, S. Actually, it's both HTTP and HTTPS, but sure. And I don't know anything about TypeScript, which is mostly the language that is written in Deno, but I am going to do it with vanilla JavaScript. That's it, because I don't know TypeScript. And uh, frankly, I don't care about that language. In Node, we used to do like in npm init and npm installing all these packages. However, in Deno, we just basically reference whatever we want from available URLs, because once you have it, it will Deno will start caching them. So the first library we're gonna import is, is the serve library, which will allow us to serve HTTP server uh, responses. So we're gonna do import. Uh, serve from https deno.land and this is a standard library so we're gonna pull it from the standard and uh, then you specify the version and i think the standard library is now at version 59 uh, dot zero and then you can specify older versions if the recent one is like buggy or whatever and then do http finally server.ts because everything is TypeScript in uh, Deno. And uh, just like that, now we have the class that is serve, and now we can create a server object. I'm gonna create serve, and that's it. You do a serve, you create a serve object here, and then you specify some parameter. And uh, the first parameter is a host name, like where do you wanna listen to? And the default, I believe is zero, 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 00 that means all interfaces but since i'm not listening to any other interfaces the local interface is enough and the second parameter is the port obviously right what port do you want it it is famous right and that's it for the https this is an http pure unencrypted http one for https we're going to add two other parameters but we'll stick to that right now and here's the interesting part that i i absolutely love right and uh, we can say just like hey when we reach here that means i'm listening on port 8080 right and then we can start consuming that so the way this http server is implemented is using the generating function or the async iterator and the async iterator does this for a wait for a wait and then for every request that comes in in this server right you will be you will start consuming that request and the way it works is 
This is basically how async await works and uh, generator functions in general works is that you can, I'm going to reference the documentation for async iterators, really powerful thing, really. And I'm really uh, glad that uh, the demo team is using that because it's, it's so, it was very confusing at the beginning, but once you understand how it works, it is really powerful. So we are, the, at the beginning, there are no requests. So we're stuck here, right? And by stuck, we're not really waiting. It's just Deno is not doing anything, right? Because the uh, the control is somewhere else. And the moment the server receives a request, that is the TCP stack and the HTTP stack start uh, assembling the packet. And now we got a request, a legit request. The Deno will start yielding. Literally, it will yield, right? There is a, a command called yield, and it will yield us the request. And then immediately we will jump into this loop and we'll start uh, consuming our stuff. So we can do like console.log request. I don't know, the URL, for example, right? That's for a start. Let's just do that. Let's just print whatever we get back from the server without responding for now, okay? And uh, that's it. How about we actually start running and testing this thing? Okay. So to run, you do deno and then run and then literally index.js, which is our file, right? And deno is going to yell at us. And that's another beautiful feature in deno. It says anything has to be given permission to do, right? In, in, uh, in deno. Uh, this is unlike Node.js where you can just like, hey, just run a root and you can pretty much do anything. No, they know you have to explicitly provide flags, allow networking, allow reading, allow whatever, right? Which is which is a good semantics, to be honest, right? So what we're going to do is deno, same thing, deno, run, dash, dash, allow. That's exactly what they told us, right? Allow dash net, allow dash net, and then... We do what? Index.js. And just like that, we are running baby on port 8080. How about we test this thing? Firefox, http, localhost 8080. And obviously, <laughs> this is going to continue to spin up because we didn't really respond, right? But if I come here, look at that. We actually printed something. Kill it. Hussein. We got the URL. Not really fancy. So let's kill it. How about we actually respond this time? This time I'm gonna respond, but if I can spell right, this is how you respond. You respond with a, basically a whole JSON object. And we say, okay, my the body of the response for now is, I don't know, some string. Yay, what is up? Then we're gonna show how to return actual JSON object. So by default, the content type will be what? Text header. Right, so let's do that. Boom. We're listening again. So here, refresh. Hey, what is up? Hey, what is up? So let's check what did we actually return from the network? Refresh. Click on this guy. We returned only content length. That's it. The server returned only content length. All right. Let's spice things up a little bit. So here's what we're going to do. I want to return a JSON object. And as you guys know, if I want to return a JSON object, I need to tell the client that, hey, I am returning JSON, dude. So what you do is basically create headers equal new headers. We're going to create a brand new headers object. And then we start adding our headers, right? Append, we're going to do what? Content type. And that puppy is application slang json so just one one header for now right and that's it oh that will be just a comma because <laughs> that will be the key and that's the value right and there we just literally say headers is headers right and obviously that's not really a json is it so on, i don't know let's return on json username hussein right and I don't know, ID is one, two, three, four. That's a JSON object. Obviously, nobody likes this, right? Returning an actual JSON object in this. It's not what it's expecting. And that that's actually a lie. I like this object. So he's like, hey, I don't know what you're returning, sir. That's 
that's not I'm expecting a string. So you really need to convert this into a JSON string by doing this, right? And you can create variables and all that jazz, right? And now we're going to retain a beautiful JSON. So kill this thing, run it again. And now go back, refresh. And here's all good. It, Firefox recognized that it's a JSON. Let's prove it's a JSON. We're going to go here, network, refresh. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you can start returning all kind of headers that you want. All right. How about we try in Chrome? Enter. Looks like it's working. And uh, for fun, let's use the fetch command. Right? Fetch HTTP localhost 8080. And then do dot then. Uh, since we're expecting JSON, we can do this, right? Console.log. Boom. And then we get back the JSON, right? That's how we we can establish JSON commands, right? Awesome. And you can do send a post request as well and do the same uh, good old stuff, right? Okay. Uh, how about we actually make this HTTPS? All right. To make this into an HTTPS server, all we need to do is literally change this into TLS, right? And we're gonna get started yell, uh, we're gonna get yelled at because now we need to specify two parameters. First, the cert file, which I'm gonna specify here, and the key file, which I'm gonna specify here. But where the heck do we get this? And I'm gonna reference the video that I did for Node.js HTTP2 to, to show you how to do to use Let's Encrypt to get legit uh, certificates and a private key but for the sake of this video what i'm gonna do is generate an open ssl self-signed certificate and i talked about certificate guys in this video in this channel check those videos out so to generate an op uh, a self-signed certificate you do this fo following command you do open ssl and i believe it should be available in windows and mac I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can guys can see. So open as I'm gonna request an X509 certificate. That's the type of certificate for the web, pretty much the standard. And then I'm gonna do a new key here. The type is RSA and uh, it's gonna be a 4096 bit key. So it's really hard to break, but that's the algorithm, the, the public key encryption to generate those public and private keys. Right, and then uh, nodes SHA-256, uh, the subject doesn't really matter. It's all, um, you, can, you can have it to say anything, but the uh, common name is equal localhost because it's for me here. Zoom out, and here's the most important thing. I want a key out, this is the private key, right? Private.pem, and the public key will be the cert.pem. PEM, right? So that will be the certificate, which doesn't really just include the certificate. It will include the certificate and the signature, which is signed by the same uh, uh, same party, which is us, right? It's not really much trusted, but it's a test anyway. And once you do that, I'm going to reference the command below, guys, so you don't have to really type it in. Almost. Let's check our command. All right. We forgot a dash here. Ugh. There you go. Boof. So we'll start generating the private key and the public key, and just like that, we have two beautiful files. Obviously, not a good idea to, to have these files laying around or checking them out in a GitHub repo. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. And obviously, as actually, you saw that this is automatically grayed out because they are in my git ignore uh, code. So they, if I check this code in for you guys, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna show up. And all final thing is the cert file will be the cert.pem. Right, that's the file. Uh, that's the type of the cert, uh, output certificate, and the key is the private.pm. And now, how about we test this thing out? Deno dash uh, run index.js. No, we have to allow in it, right? And index.js, and we're gonna get yelled at again. But this time, another good thing. See, it says hey, you're trying to read a file. Deno cannot read files by default. You have to specifically tell me to, right? So this way, if you're running your application and let's say someone injected some code into your application that does something that it doesn't supposed to do, then 
the application will error essentially, right? Which is which is pretty neat. It will protect you from XSS attack. Now allow read, enter. Now we're actually listening on port 8880. All right, test the thing out. In Chrome, in Chrome, <laughs> we're gonna get yelled at and there's no way for me to actually proceed because Chrome tries to protect you as much as possible, right? I think there is an option, but I can't find it. So I'm gonna go to Firefox because they're more uh, leaning, all right? And then just like that, you're gonna get an error. That's okay because we know our certificate is not really trusted and we want to, you want to see these errors. These errors are good, guys. And accept this, once you accept it, and just like that, we are in, baby. <laughs> it's not really secure, but it's an HTTP server, HTTPS server. So follow the, the, similarly, guys, you can easily generate those with Let's Encrypt. I'm gonna reference the video that we did with Node.js. It's, it's a very similar thing. However, I want you to, Pay attention to that this is uh if you refresh now look at this it's an http 1.1 deno as of this date recording of this video does not support http 2 yet right so there is a lot of work people are working on this this is not an easy task right obviously but yeah so they're they're building all this code and then they are starting to bring the support of http 2 and, and uh, all other certificates. I'm not sure, guys, if there are like options here, more options to specify like the, um, you know, the fine grain uh, TLS uh, options such as, okay, I want these kind of handshake algorithms. I want the, uh, I want TLS 1.2 versus TLS 1.3. Um, I think this is by default. How do we find out? This is, let's actually check. This is TLS 1.3, right? So, okay, that's good. So Deno by default uses TLS 1.3 and it uses a AAS, so that's the algorithm. And uh, since it's TLS 1.3, definitely it's Diffie-Hillman as a key exchange algorithm. All right, guys, uh, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you like it, dislike it if you didn't like it. I'm gonna see you in the next one. What do you think of Deno? Do you think it's gonna take over the world, as everybody says, or no? Do you think it's just a fluke? Let me know in the comment section below and I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome.